So, Loxton and Noggin made a video entitled The Real Reason Inklings Die in Water, and as a bit of a Splatoon fanatic myself, I found a lot in this video worth responding to, and I felt like I could illustrate a lot more using a video format as opposed to leaving a comment on his video. So here we are. Please note that I'm not trying to attack Loxton, and none of you should either. This is merely my attempt at fact-checking his information, giving some constructive criticism, and even adding my own take on things. So, with that in mind, I'll be skipping ahead to the first part of the video I have something to say about. If they are made of ink, then they've got a lot of explaining to do. How do they use that to form a proper body structure? Especially considering they have internal organs, including an ink sac in their inky bodies. And they also have visible hard structures like bones, shoulder blades, beaks, knuckles. Loxton, did you even read the sunken scroll that image comes from? It specifically says that inklings don't have bones. Notice how the bone outlines are dotted, indicating that they're missing. Not to mention that Marie consistently mentions throughout both games that Inklings don't have bones. This is in accordance with real-life squids as well as octopuses. I'll give you the beak part, which real-life squids do also have, but shoulder blades and knuckles? Pretty much out of the question. As an aside, though, what evidence suggests that that organ you highlighted is the ink sac and not, say, the heart? Especially considering that if we compare the Inkling's anatomy to that of a real-life squid, we'd see that the hearts, yes, squids do have multiple hearts, are located higher in the body than the ink sac. It seems to me that the organ below the one you highlighted, the one actually being pointed to from the big blue text on the scroll, is the ink sac mentioned in the scroll's text. And all of that aside, they actually consume water-based liquids in their diet, particularly fruit juices, as well as the drinks sold at the crust bucket, consisting of shakes, juice, coffee. All of this would be an issue if they were actually ink, if water truly does cause immediate death akin to a cephalopodic kryptonite. They could just have stomachs held within their inky bodies. I mean, yeah, obviously the Inklings aren't 100% ink, since they do have organs like eyes, a stomach, and whatnot. In fact, there's also an instance of Treehouse adding dialogue that contradicts all of this. One of the Japanese lines for Kelp Dome reads as follows. Kelly. It's so humid here. I'm super sweaty after a battle. Mary. Black tears were spilling down my face. It was so embarrassing. Meanwhile, here is the localized Western version. Kelly. It's so humid here. Battling makes me super sweaty. Mary. Yeah, I need a cold shower just thinking about it. Notice that. A shower likely referring to a water shower. Naturally, that would be our first assumption, going by our human standards, but there's no hard evidence that the shower's inklings use actually project water. Personally, I grew to believe that inklings bathed in ink. And before anyone says something like, you mean to tell me that inklings bathe in their own bodily fluids? Let me just say... Most of our human bodies are made up of water, and we still use water to clean ourselves, and if we were to use any of Splatoon's weapons in real life, chances are they'd be fueled with water. So substituting water and ink doesn't seem that far-fetched. Although, I do remember reading one clever YouTube comment, I'll be darned if I can find it again in order to give credit, sorry, that suggested that the Inklings bathed in thinner. Get it? because paint thinner is used to clean up paints? No clue if that would be more or less deadly than water to Inklings, though. Before we proceed, something does need to be addressed. I can already hear you now piping away in the comments. Loxton, if the law doesn't support it, it's just a game mechanic or a rule as part of a turf war in universe. They don't actually die. Crud. He's on to me. To this, I say, dearest viewer, you overlook one key detail, the Octo Expansion. In the final boss fight- Whoa! Dude! Spoiler warning, please! 
Nothing in this video, from the title to the thumbnail to even your description, gives any hint that we'd be delving into the final battle of the Octo expansion. As someone who had yet to finish that mode before watching this video for the first time, I'm very unappreciative of this. Now, I do have some stuff to discuss regarding this segment, meaning I can't just skip past it. So for all of my viewers who haven't beaten the Octo expansion and want the details of it to remain a surprise, please skip forward to this time on the screen now. Okay, are we ready to delve into this? I'm doing it. In the final boss fight of the Octo Expansion, it is entirely possible for you to fall in the water and get splatted. But unlike the rest of the scenarios in Splatoon, the entire final boss run, from when you tell Tartar you wish to go to the Promised Land, to when you finally reach Inkopolis, is missing one key thing. Checkpoints. You do not encounter a single respawn point throughout this entire sequence. And when you fall, Pearl and Marina scream out in horror! And the screen fades to white. In a recent inter- This would have been a perfect time to show this instance happening in your footage in order to illustrate your point, but it's not there. Sure, people like me who have tried and failed to beat the final boss would know that it's true, but for the sake of your video and argument, it really helps to show this evidence for people who don't know and don't care about being spoiled. In fact, since I have my own game footage here, I'll go ahead and show you all what Loxton was talking about. In a recent interview, it was confirmed by the developers that when this happens, you actually die. And the game is reverting time. The only time in all of Splatoon canon where death is truly permanent. By the way, this whole actually dying thing isn't limited to just the final boss. In the end game of Alto Expansion, you have to go through a whole series of stages leading up to the final battle, and in all of these stages, you have checkpoints. But even though getting splatted may simply send you back to the last checkpoint you activated, Marina, Pearl, or Cuttlefish, and yes, Cap'n Cuttlefish does it too, will still cry out as though you've really died. I'm just saying, I don't think the presence of checkpoints or lack thereof is any indicator as to whether death is permanent or not. You're truly dead when the game decides you've passed the point of no return. From a story standpoint, when you fall into that water, you aren't following the rules of a turf war. You aren't willingly giving up your form. You're fighting for the safety of Inkopolis and you actually are permanently falling in battle. Water then really is fatal. And I agree with this. Nothing more to say, I just wanted to let everyone know where I stand. But why? I'm going to skip the theories he comes up with, for now and jump ahead to the Word of God report he makes. So literally, as we were about 70% done with making this video, Nintendo came out and said it. That's right, they now have a canon Word of God reason for why the Inklings die in water. Long story short, their skin is too thin for them to survive in water as a byproduct of them evolving to be able to transform. Would you care to provide a link to this explanation in your description? Or at least a show a screenshot of it? Not saying you're lying, but people like me would really like to see your source so we can verify it with our own eyes. Ah, found it. Also, it's come to my attention that this information was primarily shared on the Nintendo Switch's news app, which is probably why Loxton either couldn't or didn't bother to show his source but here's an article relating everything about it anyway. So yeah, the explanation is basically that their skin is a little too thin for the water. I'll spare my viewers the effort in hunting down this article themselves and include the link in my description. In addition, I also found another canon piece of material from the Squid Research Lab, which is run by Hisashi Nogami, the producer of the Splatoon games and the same guy who provided the canon reason why Inklings and Octolings can't swim. So, you know, it's a legitimate stuff. This post explicitly states that Inklings dissolve when they dive into water and further suggests that these creatures can't maintain a solid form when submerged. So, 
Yeah, it's been known for a while now that water is indeed lethal to inklings. So yeah, that's that. I'd say it's not as good of a reason as our last theory, but it's cool, still cool, uh, cool. I thought Nintendo liked science. <laughs> Where did you get that idea? So, in lieu of the official explanation from Nintendo, I'm now going to judge how well Loxton's theories stack up to it. You know, for fun. His first theory is that Inklings can't swim, that they're top-heavy in sync, and that dissipating is just an aesthetic choice for the game. Obviously that isn't the case, even though it is true that Inklings can't swim. It's just more of a byproduct of the fact that their skin is too thin for water. His second theory is that Inklings have a mucus over their bodies that allows them to breathe, and that this mucus gets washed off in water which I assume also poses the idea that Inklings dissipating is just for show, since if this was true, it would just lead to them drowning. While I'm sure it's true that Inklings and Octolings can't breathe in water, mucus of any sort has never been mentioned by Nintendo, so like Loxton, I'm tossing this theory out. Then there's his third theory, which he seems to be the most invested in. But now here's where things get interesting. Notice the types of water you encounter in Splatoon. Arowana Mall is next to a beach. Salt Spray Rig is off the shore, being an oil rig. The Manta Maria is a boat in the middle of the ocean. All of these stages share one quality. Salt or ocean water. Some stages, such as Camp Triggerfish, which is over a lake, don't follow the theme, but in general, when water is involved in Splatoon, it is natural water. Or in the case of Mahi Mahi and New Albacore Hotel, water containing high amounts of free ions, being that it's chlorinated. The easiest explanation then is that water containing a high concentration of free ions, such as chlorinated or salt water, is somehow harmful to inkling and octolink physiology. So then what is the explanation behind Camp Triggerfish's water doing the same thing? Again, though, that's far too simple and makes far too many assumptions without any justification. But there's at least one more theory that we have to consider, again, that mostly natural water sources seem to cause this issue. And note again that Inklings and Octolings appear to lose body cohesion when falling into said water. These two points hint at a larger explanation, one that brings together game mechanics, game lore, and real-world science and explains some plot holes while we're at it. That explanation is ocean acidification. So out of all of our explanations, this one seems to be the most plausible. The water, having a pH level significantly below that which is safe for marine life, is harmful to inklings and octolings foolhardy enough to enter it. While in real life, that may not be the such dramatic, they explode instantly case, Wait, so increased ocean acidity wouldn't cause these creatures to dissolve? But I thought that was one of the focal points of this explanation. Heck, Coca-Cola has a pH of 2.5, though I guess if you filled a fish tank with Coca-Cola, you couldn't exactly have a fish survive in it for very long. Of course, if you filled a fish tank with anything other than the type of water suitable for the fish inside, the fish wouldn't survive in it for very long. This is still the closest explanation that we'll get that is simultaneously friendly to all of the games admittedly contradicting lore and... By contradicting lore, I assume you're referring primarily to the cold shower Marie mentions in the first game, which I already gave an alternate explanation for. I mean, it did seem to be your only basis for saying... Nintendo of America doesn't seem to know what they want to say then when it comes to Inklings and Octolings and water exposure. By the way, Nintendo of Europe says it too. Just saying. In other words, that's the theory that you get to settle on. I would give my review of this theory now, but his future self adds to this theory, so I'll skip ahead to that part now. Also, newly data-mined dialogue for the European Adventure vs. Relax Splatfest states that Inklings and Octolings dissolve specifically in the ocean. More evidence for it being the ocean in particular, not just water in general. Upon examining this Splatfest dialogue you mentioned, I found out that Pearl only mentions the ocean in particular because Marina brought up a quick dip in the ocean in the previous line. 
It's not evidence that the ocean is the only body of water capable of dissolving inklings and octolings. So this theory that the acidification of the ocean made the waters lethal to inklings and octolings is interesting, but it doesn't really line up as well with the official statements as much as Loxton wants it to. For one thing, it still doesn't take freshwater sources like Camp Triggerfish into account, which inklings and octolings will still dissolve in. I just think there's something about H2O in general that passes through the inklings and octolings' skin, which could be thought of as less like skin and more of an outer membrane that they develop as they age, and breaks down their bodies. So that's basically the end of the video. Overall, Loxton, I'd say this was a pretty solid effort. Although in your efforts to gather evidence from the games to form the foundation for your theories, you made several avoidable errors. Not reading the sunken scroll, claiming that a lack of checkpoints meant permanent death even when that wasn't the case, a lack of proof shown on screen or in your description, all of this may sound like nitpicking, but it suggests to me that you pulled your evidence from other sources on the internet instead of doing first-hand research yourself. I mean, you do have the games, right? Most of these mistakes seem to result from ignorance of the game's texts, which is odd coming from someone who's apparently a big fan of the games. I would suggest you start providing your own footage wherever it's feasible, or maybe you don't have a capture device, which would probably explain a lot, but you still could have fixed your script with knowledge that you could have gotten just from playing the games. Most importantly, though, please put spoiler warnings in your videos if you're going to spoil final boss fights. And now for the things that I liked. I do like your personality and the way you edit your videos, especially when it comes to illustrating the science you use. You do a great job with your proof, when you provide it. I just wish you'd provide it more. Well, that about wraps up my video. Thanks for watching.